It's a case of not too young to run, but not yet ready. My life starts very early because when I be day 10 years old, police enter my village, scatter the place. To free movement. That violation of my right, my arrest, mm. my detention. Yes. My restriction. Now since that night, now I make decision as a 10 year old say, when I reach time, I go fight to ensure safety. We're still there under new colonial control. Hmm. Now we come day inside internal recolonization by our Yes, good morning ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world today. Some are awake, some are still uh, in bed, I guess. It's, uh, it's just uh, an opportunity to say hello to everyone again. It's been a while. I, we're right now heading to the Court of Appeal in Abuja for a bail variation hearing, uh, which has been stalled for some time now regarding our unjust fair body some cumbersome trial in Abuja for exercising our rights to protest against the useless government uh, in our country uh, last August for which uh, I was unlawfully arrested and detained for months so they've uh, kept us in court since that time and uh, a bill when we were eventually granted bail bill was itself very burdensome and I've been in Abuja for almost a year now I'm sorry yes I was spending five months first in this city in detention and then after that came the lockdown but before the lockdown the government kept stalling over the trial so uh, but today after twice uh, making an attempt to get a hearing at the Court of Appeal the we are going back to the Court of Appeal when we first went, we sat in court. Our case was number three. It's had over 20 cases. They never got our case. And um, today we are going back there to resume our request to quash the bail conditions uh, so that, um, you know, we can uh, be relieved of all those uh, unnecessary conditions. We don't know what will happen, uh, but I've been told that we're at case number two today, and uh, the trial, I mean, the, our case will soon be here. So we're heading and, uh, to court, and there's a little bit of traffic due to the lockdown in Nigeria. I hope all, all of you guys are safe wherever you may be. It's been a very hectic uh, year because of the pandemic all over the place, uh, around the world, and of course, we have a uh, double jeopardy here or tragedy we have uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic the covid 19 pandemic here but we also have a leadership pandemic in nigeria that one doesn't go away we have not been able to find the vaccine to cure it only a revolution can kill that one um so guys um so we, we're heading to to court and i wanted to as I usually do, just say hello to all of you. I appreciate you guys for reaching out all the time. Some of you reach out uh, privately, some on Facebook, some on uh, Twitter, um, Instagram, some by word of mouth, uh, sending messages to me, some sending support. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, we will uh, never stop fighting for the soul of uh, our own space. Uh, and ensure that nobody takes us for granted in our lifetime, that we fight for our own generation to be able to breed and also fight for the generations to come that they have a place of dignity in life. And I also want to use this opportunity to uh, try our support to our brothers, sisters, mothers and fathers who are grieving 
uh, in the United States and fighting against racism over there. Uh, my heart is with you. If I was on the ground, I would uh, be part of the protest. In fact, I'm a, a regular, I regularly participate in the protests in New York known as Fuck the Police protests uh, whenever there's police brutality uh, in the States. But here we have a problem that's even worse than uh, racism. We have bigotry, we have corruption, uh, we have, um, you know, incompetence, all kinds of crimes against humanity here. Uh, and the way policemen are killing over there, our policemen are killing way more than that per day. They kill for fun, they kill for money, they kill for people in power, they kill over girlfriends, boyfriends, police will kill you for any reason here. And um, without uh, reducing the struggle against police brutality in the U.S. to uh, something that is irrelevant, because we don't, I don't like to make this comparison. Wherever there's injustice, we must fight it. But we have a problem here at home that we must fight. And sometimes I wonder when, when our people get more interested in fighting for George uh, Floyd, who was killed in the U.S., whereas there were 11 people killed on the first week of the lockdown by our security agencies. Nobody even, nobody's even talking about them anymore. Yesterday, a motorcyclist was killed uh, over 100 Naira bribe to a policeman. Nobody's talking about it. Girls are getting raped and killed every day in this country. Uh, uh, the, the president is not even talking about it. You know? But if it was a foreign situation, all of them would be issuing statements. Uh, so, but we must understand that our battle is to be fought holistically. You can't be fighting small, small battles knowing where the big problem is. Le leadership is a big problem, you know, here. Yeah, that's the reason. This is Abuja. This is their, this is their city. This is the federal capital of... Uh, you know, federal criminal territory of Nigeria, we have to ensure in our lifetime that we liberate this country, especially liberate our country from the tiny minority of people here in Abuja who are wreaking havoc on our people, economic, political, social, cultural havoc on our people. So and I'm glad that um, we are seeing a higher level of consciousness right now among young people, older people who are talking about they are, so many of them are apologizing for not believing us in 2018, 2019 and yeah, particularly 2019 when we stood for election, election never took place but they declared a winner and when we saw that election never took place, we went to the next level, which is a higher level of resistance by calling for national protest and we were abused, insulted, incarcerated, and now we are under forced trial. Uh, but people are more conscious now, but consciousness is not something you have for a moment and then you abandon for another moment. It's like oxygen. If you don't have it, you are dead. So I hope people understand that the level of consciousness that is growing now have to be sustained and it must graduate to something else, you know, of uh, direct action. Uh, I've been seeing some of our stars, you know, throwing out some conscious vibes. I hope it's not just one of those uh, things they do for the sake of, uh, uh, you know, getting sympathy that is real. That one day all of us, we put our feet and boots to the ground and um, chase the crazy bad heads out of town. So, guys, uh, I want to thank you for, for all that you're doing sustaining this consciousness uh, it has to be sustained there's no alternative to that and it doesn't matter i've always said whether i'm uh, here with you or not whether i'm incarcerated or dead nobody can postpone the day of judgment in this country i think the oppressed are tired and uh, they are tired of carrying the burden of the oppressors and uh, they are tired of being deceived they are tired of being raped they are tired of uh, being robbed and they are tired of being denigrated and desecrated every day uh, by the authorities here in power who are looting and destroying the commonwealth of this nation. Uh, so I am um, 
I'm here and uh, I decided, contrary to their expectation, that I would never run away. This is my country, uh, Nigeria. I don't have any other country. I've never, never uh, applied to become a citizen of another country other than Nigeria. I don't begrudge those who who have dual citizenship. Is a right, but it's a, it's a choice I made uh, since uh, I arrived in the U.S. and uh, until I left last year, uh, July, and came to, to 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 Nigeria to further the struggle for freedom in our country. So, guys, um, I will, uh, as I usually do, just. Uh, Thank uh, some of our regulars. I see Alex Labanji here. I see Lucky uh, Tiger Tyre, Olajimoke, Omolola, Yodele Zikel, Zumbako, who is watching just now. Uh, Williams Ade Boale. Ah, my man Olufalo, um, <laughs> Humble Prince. Good to see you. Uh, Prince Ade Boye Lawson. So you have a sincere question. It's, uh, so some of my people are saying that we have abandoned revolution now for Dua Republic. That's not true. Uh, our position on revolution now stands. I don't also begrudge people who are campaigning for uh, you know a nation where they think they can find justice. But I don't believe that breaking up Nigeria will solve Nigeria's problem. Because in breaking up Nigeria, we have just big, broken up a big problem into smaller pieces and every part of uh, the smaller piece we have their own genetic uh, problems and uh, if uh, what I'm hearing is correct some of our people who are shouting for Dua Republic might inadvertently be working for politicians who are just using that agenda to negotiate for a uh, political position in 2023 so let's be guided Let's be guided. Uh, I know these politicians very well. I've uh, worked against them. I've never worked with them before for years, and I know their antics. But that is not to say that people don't have legitimate right to ask for self-determination. I support that. But I'm not part of people who uh, have abandoned the revolution now struggle for the balkanization of Nigeria. I don't believe that a divided Nigeria will solve Nigeria's problem, will solve anybody's problem. Yes. So, um, thank you. So, uh, I see K. Ram here, Tari Roberts. Thank you. A lot of joy, Felix. Thank you so much. It's uh, Abbas Ajevene. Thank you. Sandra Uti. Thank you. Um, Lukman Taiwo Bakre. Thank you. Brooks T. Hubo. Thank you so much. Tuskas. Uh, thank you. So people say they're even planning rallies. Uh, there are people already who have sent me songs for 2023. <laughs> Some people have made t-shirts. Uh, but, you know, as I've always told you, we can't have 2023 without ending 2020 with our dignity intact, without ending 2021 with, you know, our dignity intact, without ending 2022 with our dignity intact and being alive. And if you give these guys who are in power today a chance, we are all doomed, doomed, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that as an exaggeration. That's how they are wired. They don't care about you. Uh, they don't care about me. They don't care about anybody. They care about themselves and their pockets. So, so uh, a little thank you so much, so We had a great meeting recently. Uh, Musa Freedom, my friend there uh, and comrade. Martin is a gym of four. Martins is my senior uh, geography and planning department, University of Lagos. Martinzo, good to see you. Ah, Bayo Ogorontifa, it's a great comment. Denuga Soyebo, great to see you. Uh, you came all the way from Chicago to see me in Abuja after I was released. Thank you so much. Uh, there's someone here whose name is Fiki Fiki. That's an interesting one. I only know about Fiki Fiki. That's uh, Mr. Macaroni, who is. Uh, <laughs> an interesting uh, comedian in Lagos who I like uh, his character is you know symbolizes the rot in the society you know when I watch him sometimes he says you know I have no shame these leaders in Nigeria they have no shame they have no conscience yes Jonah Hai 
Ah, Payo, just a Payo Sumariga, one of uh, dependable people in the US, Raj Momodu, uh, Fola Kumi, Anike. So we're right now approaching um, the Court of Appeal. We are entering the gate of the Court of Appeal. I'm going to give you a sneak peek here. Um, when we came last time, they locked the gate against us, claiming that uh, there was a. Um, I think you make it right. Is it, is it the main yeah. building? That's the main building, right? Yes, go here. I think this is the main building. This is headquarters. This is the main building, right? So we've arrived the courtroom, uh, or the court of appeal. Uh, the court building at uh, the headquarters of the court of appeal. We're going in now.
Nigeria they use computer. The leaders of Nigeria they use radio where they turn the knob. 